Today is day 353 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on with project number 8. Simple calculator. Let's go ahead and crack open the following. We have our example project. Um, we also have our version of the project. Example calculator. Um, there is all of that. Our secondary guide, as well as the following. Dum 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 dum. Let's crack open the developer console. Good, good, good. Into JavaScript. At least for our file. We get to continue our nightmare on from line 152, which is, I believe, some form of a for slash if statement that still needs our attention. <clears throat> So, that brings us down to, essentially, the last two functions. Is calc value valid along with append? So, before we go chipping away at all of that, let's line things up really quickly. D -d 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 -d. Is calc value valid? Cool. Followed by the following. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, don't mind me, just a moment. I am gonna crack open yet another window. Though it probably won't be visible on stream due to how we have OBS set up. I did merely want to check a comment or two. I think Topher had added a comment or two to our last video. We had to just dive into the stream, so we didn't really get a chance to see them. I kind of want to verify what they were. Ah, uh, cool. A clip. And, and a message. Noted. Noted. Let's see what the message is. We can gander at the clip later. Quite a few line. Okay, okay, so that's 100, and that's 14 minutes in. Okay, don't use variable. He's right, he's right. Fix your indentation. We need to do that as well. Why is there a early brace after your equation dot push? It's got eyes like a hawk. It's just amazing. Push is valid. The bracket after it that you added isn't. Yeah, yeah, death, death confused face. I agree. Uh, you remove the opening curly brace, but not the closing one you added. Remove line 93. Remove line 125. Calc, not clack. Uh, never trust user input. I think that was my uh, realization um, regarding why we had so much more um, pre, what do we want to call it, preemptive code to help sort through user, user nonsense. Um, and then lastly, the calculator has more logic involved than the other projects. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, and then line 141. So I'm going to revisit all of that noise. However, I, I also believe there is a notification or two. Left a message on your video. Oh, aha ah, ha Neat. It shows stuff and such. What about that? Okay, you could do this either way. Not really be that big of an impact overall on functionality. Close out of that. What about what about this guy? Boom. Yeah, line line one three four. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. So back into action. Da 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 Back into chat. Dee da dee da dee dee. Ba da ba ba da ba. 
So I kind of want to run through. So we aren't using, let's do a quick run through, see if we are, in fact, do we have any stray variables? Let's, let's reflect on the two, four slash if loop statements that we, that we added yesterday to the equals function and the parse calculator. Was there more that we also added to? I don't believe so, because the rest was for update. Good, good, good. Now, reflecting on yesterday's progress, we did, I believe we started with parse calc. So for if anyone sees a stray variable, remember, we are operating in a universe where only let and constant now exist. Variable is no longer welcome on our ship. We are, we are striving to be a better, better programmer. Small step, but that's, the, that's one of the steps that we can manage. Okay, so uh, let, and, and we get to reflect on, on what we throw in regarding the, the for if stuff. So uh, it's a mix of both. Um, for let i equals zero, uh, as well as character, Character will equal string dot character at i, i plus plus, if container operator character, if current equals empty string, and character equals hyphen or minus, uh, the current will equal minus else. Equation dot push parse float current on a character, current will be an empty string, else current plus equals string at character i. If current does not equal an empty string, equation dot push parse float current, uh, followed by return equation. Continuing on to equals, which receives the calc parameter. I know we would had clack at some point in here, which is scary and sad, but that's just what happens after midnight. Uh, don't let Stevens program after midnight and don't get them wet. Same, same rules as gremlins for the last 350 plus days. So, um, continuing on, constant operator, we've got multiply and divide, plus and minus, uh, let new calc, empty array, and let current operator, um, primed and ready to receive some form of a future data type, depending on what we, what we set it to. For let i equals zero. <laughs> i less than operator dot length, iterate by 1, i plus plus, for let j equals 0, j less than calc dot length, j plus plus, if operator i, calc j, current op, operator i, calc j, else if, current op, new calc, new calc dot length minus 1, so the last, last element of the new calc array will equal current op, new calc, dot length minus one comma to calc j turn op will equal null else new calc dot push calc j um calc equals new calc and new calc will then be set back to an empty array d d d d d d d if calc length is greater than one if calc length is greater than one console error error unable to resolve calculation return calc else return calculator zero, uh, return calc. Aha, there is a clack on line 41, which was Topher's last words of wisdom to us before, before moving on. So I should go ahead and change that now, since we are looking at it, line 141, calc, save, 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 look at that, okay. So, uh, good, good, good. <laughs> you know what? Let's uh, let's let's go ahead and be that guy. Let's just crack this open and bring it over uh over to copy, copy, copy. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. Dee 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 la da da da. Dee 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 la da 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 da. Good, good, good. 
Dim 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 rise. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. So these were the the, the comments he left throughout uh, the most recent and last one was line 141, which we just addressed. The clack not calc issue. Uh, we will be breaking new ground down here. Uh, we did just review the or slash iffy nonsense. However, I do want to double check that all of these have been addressed. So it also seems like there are no more variables um, currently in existence in our code, which is nice. Uh, if anyone does see them, be sure to shout it out. Uh, we'll be certain to shoot on site. So fix your indentation. Damn. Was it control shift? Was it P? Uh, we should take bets on what the right answer is. I'm going to go with control shift P. I think my spidey senses recall some kind of thing happening. Let's save, save, save. Control, no, uh, command for us Mac users. Command shift P. Aha! Indent. Uh, was it auto indent or window toggle auto indent? I think it was just auto indent. We go down and we hit enter. There is a blue dot for change right up here in in atoms, so I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna save and we're gonna hope everything worked out for the best. So fix indentation, checkity check. You know, it was probably with all the four iffy nonsense, it probably got out of hand. I think that's probably what caused my confusion before on where the curly braces were falling up here. Um, that was causing confusion. Primarily for me. Um, but anyways, that's, that's that. So, why is there a curly brace after your equation push which we addressed with yesterday. We did sort out exactly that issue. I, at least I hope we did. Yes, this guy goes there. Following the stuff. Who can find it? Who can find it? We go up to... Equation dot... Equation dot push stuff. Um, equation dot push followed by current, a curly brace of its own followed by the else with curly braces surrounding it. So we had, you know, that's interesting. I could have sworn there was a big space above it, right here. Yeah, that thing. I'm telling you, there was a space there yesterday. Maybe I'm crazy. I could be crazy. So there's that. Let's go ahead and save, but this is back normal. Push, current, Elsie goodness. Push, current, curly brace, Elsie goodness. Save, save, save. Back into action. Push is about, see, these are the kind of comments on, like, a majority of the videos when, when Topher isn't able to make it to the, the live stream. This is still, this is day 353. I just, I still think everyone needs to come to terms with the, the, the scale of support, really. Cultivation and motivation that, that. Sir, Sir Topher has, has provided uh, the BDX community and, and, and journey for, for all the, the projects, which this is what started in October, but let alone just the daily support for the nine months preceding it and the, the daily efforts still. Even even when not present, uh, each each and and every day basically. So it's it's I don't know. I don't have words to describe it. If I did, I would use them. But awesome and and shocking and just awesome. Yes, good good. Kind of a tangent there, but uh, let's let's get back to business. So continuing down the helpful rabbit hole. 
uh, curly stuff has been addressed with. Push is valid. The bracket after it that you added isn't regarding the same curly fiasco. You remove the opening curly brace, but not the closing one that you added. Oh, well, I... This, let's just check through here. So again, when we go to either one of the click next to them, it highlights the blue. So we've got this curly brace, which is the opening and closing line 84 to line 95. Here is if, for the surface level primary if, which takes us right to line 92 for the else. Else is also contained right here, 92 to 94. Inside of this, we've got line 86. Inside that, we have our insider first if, we have our nested if, curly brace 86, closing 88. Else is 88, closes on 91. There's that in this. Okay, I, I do believe that all checks out. I think we all of our, our ducks, our ducky curly braces are uh, in, in line and in, in order. Remove line 93. I believe at a time there was confusion and fury on line 93. I'm not sure. Let me actually add back the space we had. We did have this space. Line 93 would be this guy. Else that. I think, you know what, and we can end up checking the comment at that time. Or the video at that time. So let's go ahead and do the following. Lady diddly, lady diddly, lady diddly, so, sort of inception y, a stream of our own stream inside of a stream on a stream. Slightly excessive. Now, let's, okay, let's, uh, we can pause it. How do we pause it? Here we go. Cool. And let's crack it open full screen. Is this all coming across in OBS? It is, it is. Shocking. Okay, so let's try our best. Team effort. Line 93 in the video on the left yesterday's stream. Everyone look. Everyone look. Line. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's there. I see it. So it is, it's not our current setup. It used to be a stray stray curly brace it was a thing we, we we dealt with it we tackled it we just needed to to confirm confirm the kill we we had an empty body bag and we needed to fill it with a curly brace and it turns out we're we're set we got our bases covered close out of that noise okay cool cool moving on moving on line 125 Calc, not clack. Dee 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 aha, uh -huh. line 125. That is amazing. We even read through it and didn't see it again. We did spot the line 144. I wonder if we double click on this command. D D D D D D D. Mm hmm. That's all the, the calcs in the universe, but back down to where we started. Calcity, calcity, calc. So I'm trying to see, as we're looking through here, the ones we missed. Yes, on line 125, we are indeed missing clack. And that's new calc on line 127 at the beginning of it. It is calc at the end. Line 135 has calc and new calc. Same with 136 for new calc. Okay. 
All right. All right. So it seems like 125 is currently the only remaining problem child. Uh, you know what? We will select that. Command D. Command D. And that is the only one. Nothing else is lighting up. Cool. So calc. Good, good, good. There's that. Now, next thing. Dee, 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 dee. Uh, that was reflecting after our rant regarding all of the... Um, what do we want to call it? Basically, proactive pr protective code to to register an error or when when to indicate that the user threw something incorrectly into the into, into the calculator and try and bring bring things to a clean halt before more damage gets done. So there's that. The the never trust user input. Always always looking out for our projects. Very good and important. And lastly we had tackled line 141 uh, already, so that leaves this. The calculator has more logic involved than the other projects. Yes, I, I was I was reflecting on that. It seemed like there was a lot more efforts going into making a seemingly simple calculator come to life than the other projects. But there's just there is a lot of stuff that we gotta that we gotta deal with in in doing this project to to get it to function correctly. All right, there we go. Hey, uh, I'm richer than you. Don't at me. Cool. Thank you for, for, for hanging with us. Uh, line 93. Yes, yeah, we, we did address the, it was sort of an ongoing issue of neglect. We did verify that we tagged the stray curly brace that was chilling on line 93, and it, it has since been removed. We actually somehow managed to tackle that yesterday. There's this. Closing out of that, we are all set to go to actually break new ground for today's calculator. All right. We are left with continuing on day 353. We begin to break new ground on the last two functions. Well, let's just start with the second to last function. Is calc value valid? These next two that we will be focusing on down here have kind of a lot of noise. It, smaller chunks. I think a little bit more straightforward for each section, but there's just a whole flock of them in in both. It's just ongoing. Same goes for append. We kind of end end on a bang, a large finale. Uh, a lot of memory dot something throughout all of this. All of this noise is is append. So we've got a lot going on. Or append it it brings us all the way down to here so this beast from line 202 now true topher has comments and it's really narrow with our, our js fiddle window but nevertheless we we've got a lot to address in that particular function um so let's go ahead and dive into is is valid calc value, which is different on ours. We've tweaked the wording just so to try and make it our own. A little bit of friction to have it set in, sink in a bit better. Function is calc value valid. We are still taking the value parameter. Stuff goes here indeed. And it will not be that. So, from the top, checks if the value passed to 
the calculator is valid so we can proceed. We have variable, in the example, constant, or us, and let's be sure to keep using constant or let when necessary um, instead of value as we proceed through this. So if you spot one of those, be sure to shout it out. Slap on the wrist for Steven is well deserved if I manage to forget that. Memory.log.length. We are in the clear. First, make sure we have a value. That seems like a reasonable first step to me. So, first things first, no value. Is that really how it works? You just you can drop in an exclamation and value or value is empty i like the no value format that's really cool very concise straightforward that's that's bitchin that's worthy of a lower back tattoo yeah <laughs> that would actually work out as a great lower back tattoo uh no no value that's kind of a, a self-worth play on Play on coding slash words there. Hilarious? That's okay. We can all cry in the darkness about that later. Uh, return false. So return false. Deem, 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 deem. Okay, following. Check if we should reset the screen slash memory. To do that, we will be checking memory.reset, and then we will be implementing screen.clear. Now true, it's memory.reset or value equals C, um, screen.clear, and then we will return false when necessary. So memory reset, we set up memory actually we'll leave this here we will track down memory is set up over here and it refers to object.assign it's got an empty object and it's targeting via assign initial memory which all uh which is all of this noise so we've got total log decimal and then reset false that's what we are tying things, tying things to down here. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. Uh, additionally, there is value, and I believe that will be for, we had dabbled with this before as an alternative. However, we never really implemented it, um, but our buttons can, and maybe eventually they should contain a value portion so this would be zero uh whatnot sort of like here uh for clear would be c or all clear something to that effect ac we'll consider crossing the value bridge later dum 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 I, 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 D, 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 D. In the meantime, back back down to where we were. Okay, so return false. Then or no. Memory dot reset. That's that's what we're doing. Memory dot reset. No, we had false. We need to add another if. We need to keep building this building this nightmare out. If memory dot reset memory reset all in all just another brick in the wall so c damn lowercase c capital c what do we want to do see this calculator again it's slightly slightly damn one of these is going to work. How does 
There is a lack of scrolliness over to this section. I don't know what's going up with that, but there is a C button involved on that calculator. You know what? We're gonna we could just slide the the bar, but I really don't want to because I'm a crazy person. So we will slide it on this tab. I don't know why, but the default setting in Windows are are comforting. So let's just drag this open. See, see, we've got a, a single clear type function going on there versus in the calculator we're going to end up with hopefully fingers crossed we've got a, like a clear and an all clear or a clear equation or a clear the last input um both work but right now again this is this is still a, a sort of broken down slightly altered version I like the fact that one, it is more simplified in a sense, and two, it's actually slightly more clever because it does take in consideration uh, order of operations. So that's slightly, slightly fascinating. Uh, anyways, back to the problem at hand. We are looking at what now? Was it val uh, value? Memory, memory, right. How, how quickly we get distracted shiny colors d d d d d d d screen dot clear followed by yarg wow double clear we want to make sure it's super dead double tab make sure you always double clear your calculator you want your data coming back to haunt you Zombie equations. It'll happen. False. And I believe that's it for that section. Now, continuing on with the next bit, we have prevent the user from entering a math operation or zero as the first entry. This was also an issue that we had discovered that it starts to be problematic if they throw in an odd value or kind of something you can't really work with as the very first thing uh, in our original version of the calculator. Again, we've been at this for the better part of, I think, two weeks now. Uh, the first 10 days, 11 days were absolute hell. Uh, we had run into many different issues, didn't handle any of them all that well. One of them, I do recall, was the fact that we did stumble across this particular issue, uh, especially when we were setting up the early stages of the multiplication and division process. So those, those two proved to be rather difficult. Dum, 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 dum. Right, so we should actually be connecting the dots, not down here in function, but here. If, if something should happen, do something else. If our conditions we are looking for, we've got, we've got a couple. I like seeing that they're broken up at the or. Cool, and there is a space after the ors. Don't mind that one, but we'll put a space after ours. Nice. We will do the following. Log is empty. Wait a second. No. Not log is empty. Ours is different. Again, this is exactly why we modified our code, just to make us think a little bit more, have a little bit of friction. So it's our own own situation that we're trying to deal with as much as possible. It is not log is it's this is log empty. That's what we're running. So is log empty parentheses blah blah blah. That is what we are comparing, calling and running down here. So is log empty we could have just hit enter we will for the following ones 
is log empty empty parentheses and contains math oper I think ours is just contains operator raise your hand if you see it uh there it is contains operate here here we go that's what we're looking for so and contains operator what about contains operator value we're passing it value even though it receives string which is fine it's still it'll do the same thing it doesn't really matter noted noted okay followed by a bunch of ors and and whatever so contains operator team 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 here did we leave off down here contains operator yes good 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 value ah because we're we're passing along this parameter whatever we're working with to that as the string that it will be reading very clever very clever value or should we do a space we absolutely could i see no no reason not to now we do want to tab in just a bit now where where would one do you know what let's go back to this before we start mashing the enter key we have log no, 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 is, our version of it, is log empty. Same song and dance, some general themes, and is log empty, and value equals blah. Equals sign, or our damn webcam, our stupid eye patch microphone. Ugh, day 365, can't get here soon enough. Then we can implement the new setup. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Everything's going to be fine. Just happy thoughts, Steven. Happy thoughts. Okay. Okay. We're going to pull this off. I can't believe we have less than two weeks to go. So cool. Now, speaking of cool, progress and focus would be kind of bitching at this moment. What the hell are we trying to log? Log is log empty. Yes, yes, good. Let the delirium consume you, Stephen. It's clearly after midnight. We're we're inching our way closer to 1 a.m. I can feel it as our mind deteriorates. All right, so two ampersands walk into a bar, right? Good, good. There's that. Value equals zero. No, 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 no. Not a stray space, blithering idiot. Just a zero. Okay, okay, let's tag these two right after the secondary space post or one. And tab and I'd really like for it to be lined up. I don't think we're going to get that. And we're not going to be that lucky. We had another, let's look at where our code falls with the following. We had multi-line ORs. We were just looking at them earlier. Our preventative. Aha, see, it's lined up with the parentheses. The rest of it is, is lined up with that. So maybe that can provide some comfort for us. We also had it lined up with the else, not the if. So it, the, the spacing seems and will appear a little bit different. Else it lines up smoothly below it, but let's see where we stand with ours. If we are lined up with the... With the beginning parenthesis, which we are. Cool. All right, we can live with that. We can live with that. All is well in the universe. So anyways, we've got our if conditions. We now need to have it do something. We have our if conditions, and we need it to do the following. Return false. 
I think that's a completely fair request and a wise decision. Not a colon, semicolon. Almighty semicolon. Now, continuing on, prevent multiple decimals if memory dot has decimal and value equals decimal return false. If memory dot has did we do has decimal or just decimal? My spidey sense is telling me it's just decimal. See, because nothing's nothing's popping up here versus decimal, like so. Eh, eh. We'll see. Has decimal. And, and, but we're gonna put this on hold while we go to double check. It should be towards the top. Is it within? Aha! Uh -huh. Compared to as decimal. See, see, we remembered. We remembered. Now, that means just lowercase decimal for us. We should go back down below. Piecing together this nightmare. Piecing together this nightmare. Dee 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 dee. We're in the depths of hell. La dee 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 dee. La dee 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 dee. Where the f did I leave off? God damn it. No, no, no. We're in the wrong neck of the woods. Yeah, you look right. This, this smells like the trail of confusion we left behind. Let's continue piecing this together. Right, right, right here. Not has decimal, but just decimal. Yeah, that guy. And value. One, two, three. Stringiness equals decimal, as it should, followed by return false. All right, one more slice of, of hell dealt with. Continuing on, we've got another one or two bits of fun before kicking off a pen. Maybe kicking off a pen. Maybe because that is so terrifying, we'll, we might save that for another day. We did manage to get through all of Topher's comments regarding the previous video. There were more than usual. Um, nevertheless, let's let's continue on. Hey, Morbid Coder. Eh, what a great username. Uh, you've got an assignment operator in your if statement. Got an assignment operator... In your if statement. Uh, right, right here? This guy? Yes. Wait, wait. No, no, no. As in dot assign at some point. We had our other one. I know in the beginning we've got our dot assign. We have dot assign somewhere else. Mandy. Aha. Uh -huh. Line 59 as well as. No, just those two. Just. Just those. But let's keep looking. Ah. Line 161 and 162. Right, right, right. Okay. Line 161. And 162. <laughs> you've got an assignment. Uh, you've got assignment operators in your if statement. Oh crap, the equal the single equal signs. Aha. Operator, not function call. Right, right, right. Good eyes, morbid coder. Good eyes. 
Oh, yeah, look at that. That is... That is critical. Okay, good. Noted. Ah, oh, damn. Awesome. Thank you for that. A, t a tip of the hat to you, good sir. Or, or madam, or robot, whatever you prefer. We'll go with robot. Yes, yes, awesome. Oh, look at that. No longer just the single, single equal sign. That would have caused all kinds of confusion and chaos had that not been pointed out. Just a lot of needless sadness and confusion on, on day 353. Crisis averted. Good times. All right, thank God that was avoided. So we're not quite into append yet. We are piecing together the last portion of this. Followed by... We'll hover just above prevent and focus on the following. So, check if the user attempted to enter... A decimal followed by a math operator or equals sign. Wow, even another scenario we didn't even get to dealing with in our calculator. Along the same lines as checking for all of this stuff, we were concerned about multiple decimals in our original calculator state um, a couple days ago, but we never actually got to the point of trying to address the issue. It did come up briefly, but this never even crossed our, our radar before as a potential problem. So a decimal followed by a math operator. Yes, that technically wouldn't spell doom, but it's certainly something to keep an eye out for, nevertheless. Uh, so, once again, check if the user attempted to enter a decimal followed by a math operator or equals. If contains math operator, for us, it will just be if contains operator, if conditions curly braces if contains operator value and base tab and tab wait a second Hold the phone. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's just the layout of how narrow it is. Let's move this over a bit. Does that sort itself out at all at any point? It does not. In fact, we're going to refresh the screen. I was hopeful this line would move up next to the and. Because we've got contains math operator value and, and then it's just a whole, whole set of parentheses, but there's this extra one right, right within here. So it's like it's one big sad, confusing, contains math operator thing. I just want to make sure I implement it correctly across the multi-line breakdown with the and in between. It just looks like an odd, odd setup, but we, we will nevertheless proceed with that. Again, there, there could theoretically be issues he, he did mention he pieced the guide together rather late, like a 3 a.m. effort. So if there are some oddities, not to worry. Far better than anything I, I would have come up with. This pulled us from the depths of confusion thus far, so. Uh, continuing on, and I don't believe there's any issues here with, with its current layout. I think I'm just wildly unprepared. Contains operator slash value. Not wildly unprepared. Just always confused. That's that's far more accurate. 
We made it down to the line below, and we should start chipping away with the following parentheses stuff equals stringiness decimal dot index of index of memory memory dot log dot character at log oh this is this parenthesis right here is to contain all of this noise aha well technically all of this noise interesting well yeah i guess it is from within inside inside that okay so this is just sort of a uh comforting boundary parenthesis that we're juggling it was throwing me off i thought somehow it was it was still tied to contains operator and then a separate separate thing next to it i thought it was this other no get rid of that other yeah and it was just it was causing causing confusion for me but that's not the case at all it is not not tied to this this is not one big frustration sandwich this this is an entirely separate beast these are just organizational parentheses on the outside very cool very cool so moving on memory dot log did we do period we did comma ridiculous can't even get the periods right dot character at log length minus one i believe we did use log length i don't think we set up a different beast for that yeah see log log length minus one followed by two sets of parentheses does not multiple equal signs Thanks to Morbid's tip of keeping our eye out. We don't want to assign anything. We should be evaluating negative one. So if it's not there, remember index of returns negative one if it can't find it. So if that decimal is not there, negative one or How do we deal with this bit we've got a negative one followed by a space with ors probably a space again in equals sign not equal sign enter taking it down a notch ringiness equals okay here's a fun question dot index of value hmm did i make a mess of my code can't really recall value oh yeah we'll we'll, we'll be good we'll be good the this goes down a notch that's what's happening here we're set we're golden we're fine. Value does not equal how easily we can manage to, to terrify ourselves with uncertainty. Return false for all of that checking. Return false. Uh, and then if everything's kosher, we do return Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Uh, all tests passed return true. Now, with that said, question. This is what I was pondering. We have our if statement, no space, with the beginning of the parentheses. We've got our, our double ampersands, the space after, enter. Here's the beginning of another set of parentheses, conditional value, whatever you want to call it, blah, 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 or space, enter. Here, we're starting on 
with a string of, of sorts. Should I take the time and effort, the parentheses line up, and technically, the beginning of the quotes for the string value with equals line up with the two parentheses above it. Is it better for me to space over to have the data visually line up like so? Because now everything falls into line. Index of, index of, the beginning parenthesis for memory and value, and all that noise? Or should I just leave it as it naturally falls kind of shifted? I realize this isn't going to change anyone's thoughts or views on, on the situation, but I, w I was just curious if there was a general preference, go-to best, best practice regarding that, that exact kind of scenario where you've got very similar, similar looking data, if that's beneficial or changes anyone's day. I really doubt that it holds any weight or magnitude, but just a crazy person wondering about Wondering about life and what it means to be a developer. All right, we have this. You know, with going through Hofer's comments earlier and even piecing together this little bit, yesterday was just around an hour. It was like an hour and 15 minutes. Today, we're already at minutes from 1 a.m. It's been about an hour, 56 minutes and, and 41 seconds. Do we push on with the rest of this? This is just a beast of stuff to add. I know it's just mostly following the guide, but I've been trying to take my time really soaking in what exactly is happening at every level because this guide has been so helpful and simplified i think we want i, I think i may save it's either push forward and let's face it it's going to be almost doubling the stream if we go to tackle the append function tonight by piecing together the if stuff. It doesn't need to take that long, but I'm, I'm going to enjoy my merry time trying to absorb as much of this as possible tomorrow. Or if we do somehow power through it tonight, not that we will rush, that means we're left with trying to figure out the keyboard events tomorrow. And I don't think that's going to be as daunting I feel like we're going to end up with a super, super long stream today versus if we do both and an extremely short stream tomorrow with just the keyboard events tomorrow and whatever other minor updates, I think I'd rather offset and have, have the streams a bit more equal. Dum, 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 dum. We may save this for, for tomorrow. We can kind of, we'll, we'll gauge and reflect on this in the meantime, though. Uh, ads. Hey, Matt, what's up, Matt Development? How you doing? Good evening or day. I forget your time zone, Matt. But either way, hopefully life is going well for you. Um, what's up? We're, we're, we're making progress. It's been weird. It's been a couple days of just consistent progress throughout the calculator. Now now that we've got our, our handy secondary guide that we've been following, it's become rather enjoyable. It's I almost feel like I'm learning stuff. It's kind of crazy. It's going quite well. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully life is on the up and up for you. Uh, and Sue Heen, good to have you. Uh, his calc is overloaded with features. You should think about yet. Oh, wait, uh, wait. His calc is overloaded with features you shouldn't think about yet, like memory or fractionals. Have we crossed the fractional bridge yet? Maybe it's in there and I didn't even realize it. 
we are leveraging memory quite a bit. But we have had quite a few days of ref uh, reflecting on, on the code that we've been slowly piecing together. Append does have a lot of um, memory dot so forth and memory dot other stuff. Which is another reason why I want to sort of save save the append function for tomorrow because it is now 1 a.m. and we all know after 1 a.m. it's just downhill for Steven. As far as our ability to, to think coherently, so... Out of interest for protecting the village from, from a needless inferno. We're probably going to push that fun to tomorrow. Um, Duhin, uh, I just looked at the function is number correct or whatever it was called. It checks for dot characters. Does his calculator accept inputs by text directly instead of just... Um, Pressing buttons, overdone for a beginner. I could see that. I, the is, you know, I was reflecting on... Is... Not just is calc value valid, but... Where was it? I think it was up here. Was it update? Yeah, it was update. On whether it's returning the max digital limit or calculator error... I think aside from the fact that, yes, I am shooting for a simple calculator, and I, I really don't need all of this info, and I've, I've broken how I've followed the guide up into pieces. Um, it's already been a couple days following this, this guide. Uh, the first day, well, we did just a general read-through. The following day, I tried to piece together as much as I could remember the core basics, which was still a impressive failure uh, on my part, but we tried to piece together as much as we could off memory. And then from there, we pieced together, I pieced together, just the core functions and the variables that were being used for each one. So we've had some, uh, some time to come to terms with everything, because what I was really struggling with in building the first version of the calculator was the scope and scale of the functions and the variables and just how all the data like fit together the following days i had saved and we've worked through it like this i left all the if and for loop stuff as as blanks as i've been working through it the last i don't know day or two i think um so we've we've kind of acclimated like setting a what is it a, a frog in boiling water or whatever you you slowly raise the temp and they don't really know what's going on to get used to it that's that's kind of what's been happening here but what i think this highlights despite the fact that it's not necessarily essential for our basic calculator to function i think what it highlights the message that it highlights is starting to implement that um proactive preventative code trying to prevent errors and sort of manage user input i think that's what this type of stuff is highlighting and for that reason i think it's beneficial because in the end it's not really anything too crazy just throwing it out there on the first day, yes, but considering we've had a couple days to slowly build up to it, it's no longer as horrifying the first day yet. It really didn't click. Um, but that's that's just my two cents on, on the issue. Um, but yeah, even still, I, I can agree, especially for, for our particular calculator. I, I don't think it's needed, but I think it's more of the message behind it I think it's it's worthwhile, something to be aware of and consider in the end. Something we can strive and shoot for in the future. Which is why we're still following the guide after these couple days, because there's still no way in hell I'd be able to survive with without this little bit of assistance. 
well, more than a little bit of assistance. I mean, we've got we've got a whole guide. We've got keys to the empire here. More of a map to the empire. The the calculator empire, if you will. But that that's also. But I, I do agree it is a bit excessive. Um I'm hopeful it is for the best though. Silver lining. With that said, let's go ahead and save we'll 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 save our a pending if fiasco for tomorrow because there's just there's so much going on in there and it's already after one and if we attempt it now again as we all know it's just it's going to end up in tears it's going to be 45 minutes of me being confused and crying even with the guide it's true these are facts We've got 353 days or 352 previous days of proof. Let's go ahead and jump into GitHub and save our progress. OBS. We want the GitHub desktop app. Close and add that noise. Open up this. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Is that? That's good. That's what we want. So, uh, still, um, uh, Java, JS, if, it, well, they already know it'll be for a JavaScript file. So, added, added more ifs. Is that the right way to indicate that? Probably not, but... Also past tense, added more ifs. Select all, copy, commit, and push, resolving deltas, ding, 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 close and out of that, get rid of this, La da 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 dee 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 dee. Checking our repositories for an update. Ba da ba ba da ba. There we go. Added more ifs. Twenty three seconds ago. Beautiful. Not tons of progress, but still progress nonetheless for day three hundred fifty three. Let's go ahead and jump into OBS. Thank you again to anyone and everyone who stopped by to view the stream. Uh, whether it was to assist, tips and tricks, or comment, or just view and support. Thank you very much. Today we had uh, I'm Richer Than You, Don't At Me, uh, Morbid, Coder, uh, Morbid Coder, Matt Development, Suheen, and also to anyone else who may have accidentally stumbled in here uh, by accident to view the stream. Any and all views are greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh once again, day 353 comes to an end. However, the adventure continues with day 354 of the year of streaming and learning to code. In the meantime, we are stopping the stream. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.